Well, hello, Anthony. How are you? I'm good, Kareem. How you been? I am doing well. It is a pleasure to actually sit here with you to discuss um, your film Thicker Than Blood. And so tonight I would just like to talk to you a little bit about um, this film. Like, I've seen it. It's great. It's impactful. But I would really would love for you to kind of discuss more about it to the people who have seen it, the people who have not seen it, um, and the people that we want to get involved um, in the meaning of this impactful film, All Thicker Than Blood. But before we do that, I would like to, you to just tell the viewers a little bit about yourself. Who are you? What got you started in film and all of those great things? Absolutely. I am Anthony Williams. I'm a filmmaker, um, writer, director, producer. I'm also an actor. Um, and I'm based in Chicago. I've been here about three years now. Uh, prior to that, I lived in North Carolina, but I am originally from Little Rock, Arkansas, so I call myself a Southern boy through and through at heart. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, and I just, I've been in uh, into the arts for, since I was a kid, really. I started out acting uh, in children's theater. Then I did, you know, a lot of my training in high school and in college. Uh, then, you know, did what every actor does. They up and moved to LA. I uh, was there for a brief amount of time before I went to North Carolina, which is where I really kind of broke my teeth and um, gained a lot of my experience um, on the acting side as well as behind the camera. Um, and then, you know, felt like I plateaued there and made the leap to Chicago and things have been going amazingly so far. So, Good. a little bit about me. Good. So, Thicker than blood, right? Tell us a little bit about, well, let's just start with the title. So thicker <laughs> than blood, right? So I know the term, you know, blood is thicker than water, but how did you come up with the, the idea or the concept of thicker than blood? It's pretty much that, um, because thicker than blood really came out of the idea of bonding relationships. So we know that, you know, uh, when we say thicker than blood, it's usually meaning it's tied into like a family bond because you guys share, you know, the same blood, same DNA. Mm -hmm. um, but that actually can extend, in my opinion, to something that's larger. Um, because especially in the LGBT community, we are able to uh, pick a chosen family. So we're able to, you know, have a chosen Nuclear. family. It was, yeah. They call it nuclear family, right? I think that's nuclear the term, family. term. Nuclear family. Yeah. Right. <laughs> and so even within those types of bonds and relationships, we can tend to be thicker than blood with those people, sometimes more than we are our blood relatives in our family. And so um, that's kind of where it derived from um, with, with this film, because, you know, there are a lot of relationships in this film, a lot of bonds in this film, not all from the same family, but definitely stronger bonds than those that they have with their family members. So um, just really illustrate, we use that title to illustrate that any bond that we create with any person is done out of love. Um, and not necessarily uh, based on the fact that you share the same DNA or that you share the same bloodline because we know that even with chosen family, um, we can have stronger bonds with them than the people that we grew up with or that we're related to. Thank you. So I heard you talk about family and in the context of the film. Tell, tell me a little bit about the film without giving it away, right? But just tell me a little <laughs> bit about the film. What what is the premise of the film? Um, why should and also why should individuals gravitate towards this piece of work? Yeah, so thicker than blood is about a uh, it's about a young man who returns home to uh, after having been gone for three years to celebrate his older brother being promoted uh, at work in his law firm. So he gets home. There's this huge celebration for the older brother, and we find out why Jordan, who's our main character has left for three years. And we see his interactions with his parents as well as his relationship with his brother. We see why he left for three years and we see how this family treats certain people who are living in the LGBT community as well as who are a part of other communities, how they treat them. And we see the family's reasoning for that, which is they hide behind their faith and beliefs um, and treat people a certain way because of you know what they believe. Um, and so it, it deals a lot with, you know, family bonds. It deals a lot with faith. It deals a lot with, um, 
with uh, just a lot of things. And I think people can, you know, um, really walk away from this film seeing either themselves in it in some way or their family in it in some way. Um, and yeah, people should watch it just because we've been, just been hearing that it connects with so many different people in so many different ways. Um, and people will be able to laugh at all the right spots. They will want to talk to the screen and interact with the characters in all the right spots. Mm -hmm. Sometimes they want to yell at certain characters. I, I will never forget, you know, seeing screenings back in theaters in the before times when, um, you know, how audiences would interact and to feel the energy in the theater and hear them discuss the characters and the plot lines and everything else afterwards. So it's one that really speaks to many different types of people um, on many different age groups, races, backgrounds, it, creeds, ethnicity, like it does not matter. And that's what I love about this, uh, this project is because it reaches so many different people. You know, it is primarily a black family, but we've had white people that are like, that's my mama, that's my daddy, I know a brother like this, and my son talk like that. Yeah, so that's it's relatable, relatable in so many different Universally. ways. Universally. Yeah, that's yeah, great. very much so. So what what led you to this this concept? What 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 said what made you say, hey, I want to kind of dive into the this, these particular dynamics within the family unit? Well, to be honest, this film found me, um, to okay. be completely honest. Like, I was working on a completely separate project for my first feature film, and I'd been working on it for maybe about three years, trying to get it off the ground, gain some attention, get some money for it, and it was just not happening. Um, and then the producer, the consulting producers who worked on this project with me, Nicole Griffin, um, Nicole uh, Beckwith and Douglas K. Griffin, um, they actually approached me because they saw some of my past work that I'd done in North Carolina. And so we really started to build relationships from there. And they um, came to me with an idea of, um, there was a four-year grant program that was ending, and they really wanted to be able to kind of have a staple for that grant project. And so we sat down, we talked, and they talked about certain issues that they were wanting to uh, to bring to the forefront. And then I just really introduced the idea of a movie. I was like, you guys, they, like everything that you're telling me sounds like it could be a movie. And as they're talking, my brain is just like firing and I'm like right. seeing things and I'm just like, it's just going off. And I'm like, y'all should do a movie. <laughs> and so they were like, you know, that's not a bad idea. And uh, so they, I took the notes from that meeting and the topics that they wanted to talk about. And then I created characters based around it. And from the characters developed the story. And so that really led into kind of like the family bond that we see in the film today. So it all was really just naturally and organically just came up from the three of us out of nowhere. Um, so they provided kind of the, uh, the, the content and the substance of the message that they wanted to get out. And mm -hmm. I just put that in a creative light uh, to be able to uh, put it out in a way to where it didn't sound like it was uh, like informational or preachy or um, kind of like throwing statistics at people. We I really wanted to be able to tell a story uh, that people could connect to, not only the story, but to be able to cre create characters that we all related to. Um, and I never know if that is what has been accomplished until I see people watch it um, and to see how they connect with it. But that's really how the whole thing came together. I mean, it really is like a brainchild between Nicole and Douglas on the con on the uh, information side and then me on the creative side. So that's really where the beautiful marriage came together to make hmm. this project. Great. And so since you said something about messaging um, and trying to get things across, you talked about grants and all of that when it comes to Nicole and Douglas and yourself. So you guys have coined a new term, right? Yeah. It's called, yeah. what is it? Ed edutainment? Edutainment. Yes, it again. <laughs> edutainment. Mm -hmm. Tell us a little bit about edutainment. So uh, edutainment is when you combine education and entertainment into one thing. And I really um, have been discovering that's what I'm great at. And I didn't really know that until this project and maybe even another project before. But it's, it's combining um, information and education with entertainment. And that's what we did with this. We really took all the information and the edu 
education that they wanted to get out to people and then really really tied that up into a, a creative story that people could latch on to and when you do that you don't know that you're being educated because you're so wrapped up in the entertainment aspect mm -hmm. of it yes. that yeah and so we get them engaged by the entertainment aspect and portion of it and then we continue the education part after with Q&A sessions, informational discussion panels, things like that. And so it's kind of like spoon feeding them sugar in education because it's so great to be able to sit back and engage in an entertainment fashion, but also on the back end, you're receiving you know, education without, without realizing it. So, yeah. That is great. So with that, what, what, would or will your audience walk away with when or from watching this film? So what, what is the message that you are trying to get across with this particular body of work? There's so many, uh, there's so much. And that's what I, I love about it. Um, one of the messages that we would like to get out is just that, in my opinion, first of all, that God loves everybody. God loves you no matter what you've done, where you've been, who you've been with, or who you love. He still loves you like he loves all of his other children. Um, so that's the, the faith message that we've gotten out in the film. The um, LGBT and health perspective aspects are that you need to be informed about what's happening around you. The, the world that you're living in around you, the environment that you have yourself in, because um, the more that you know, the better you can do. And that's what I love about Nicole and Douglas's um, organization called no Better, KBDB3. It stands for know better, do better, and be better. So you don't know what you don't know until you know right. it. And then when right, you know right. it, then you can implement those changes into you know living a better and hopefully more fulfilled life. And so um, I really feel like that's the messaging for the LGBT and the health aspect of it as well, is really mm -hmm. just kind of educating people on resources, educating them on health perspectives and aspects of things that they might not know or things that they felt like they may have known, but they're absolutely wrong about. Um, and so it really is opening up a platform for to start dialogue um, with the messaging that we've kind of hidden and encrypted in the storyline uh, and in the lives of these characters. Nice. So Tell us a little bit about the making of the film. <laughs> okay. Uh, no, I, I laugh because it, like the process of it, it's just so divine and God ordained that I really cannot give myself credit for anything that's happened. And I say okay. that because like I was saying before this film came to me before this film found me, I was working on something else completely different. And so after Nicole and I had that initial converse, Nicole Douglas and I had that initial conversation about doing this film, it was like lightning. Everything else really fell into place. It was like, boom, 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 boom. It's like, I really didn't even have to do anything but show up. Like everything else just landed how it was supposed to. So after we had our initial conversation, I went to do some writing on the script um, and then we immediately went into casting the film. This was back in 2016, I believe, 2016, 2017. Um, so wrote the script, we went directly into casting, and we shot the movie in, I believe it was September of 2016, in the middle of Hurricane Matthew. Um, I remember. And yeah, so it was just a journey. Um, you know, we shot in the middle of a hurricane. Most of the script that I'd written was actually written to take place outside. And so we were watching the weather reports every day to see like what rain and wind we were gonna get. I was showing up on the day that we were shooting every day, rewriting scenes because we, you know, we're gonna, gonna get rain that afternoon or we're supposed to rain all day. So we had to like readjust based on the, <laughs> the weather for that day. Um, and then also keeping in mind stuff that we'd shot before or how that's going to impact the story later and trying to make sure that we match shots so that way we're not like outside. So it was a real, like a huge learning experience on the fly. Um, 
So from there, we edited the film and then we released it uh, in February. So altogether, it was probably an eight or nine month process, which is really, really fast for a feature film to be able to write it, shoot it, edit it, and then release it. Um, so the whole process was so God ordained. I can, I don't have another way to say it because to be able to shoot this size movie in 11 days in the middle of a hurricane in nine months is rarely heard of. Wow. Really heard of, yeah. And so it leads me to my next question. <laughs> Do you think the film has been successful? Has it done what you guys set out to do? Yeah, and that, I'm glad you added that on the tail end because that's pretty much how I measure success. It's not by, you know, how much money it's gotten or where all it's gone or the festivals it's been in. It's always to me and with every project that I do is, has it reached the people it's intended to reach? And has it impacted them in a way that we had hoped and intended that it would impact them? Um, and to me, that's what success is. And in that regard, I would say yes. Um, so, you know, as we released the film, we started with grassroots efforts of going, you know, to the places that we had connections to, um, just to show the film. So we started out in the LGBT community and the health sectors, because that's where Nicole and Douglas come from. And then that really started to kind of, was a snowball effect. And we were able to go from that sector to the film festival circuits. And then, you know, one film festival opened its door, which led to another, and then we would meet other people. So that's how we got on the scale of kind of growing the film. And with every uh, screening that we did, we would host Q&A sessions at the end, post discussion sessions at the end, and to hear how, in real time, how this movie impacted the audience. To me, that's a, a that's the success because we're seeing in real time how people are taking in the what we put out in the film and to see you know how um, people see themselves in the film how they see their families in the film or even walking away with with um, information and resources in their local community for you know their own health and safety like that's a huge thing a lot of people they don't know um, you know the impacts of um, sexual health um, or, you know, they don't know the resources of, uh, that are available to them in their community or even the advances that we've made in technology with, with sexual health. Um, and so to be able to see that we are impacting and edutaining people, you know, along the way, <laughs> um, yes. to me, that's, that's a major success because people can walk away from that with knowledge and then they can pass that knowledge along to other people. So you have that snowball domino effect. You hit mm -hmm. one person and then it just goes, you know, yes. from, from there. So yes. yeah, I feel like we've been a success. Good. So you kind of talked about um, your, your focus groups, your Q and A's and things of that nature that happens in real time. So what, what has been some of the feedback that you've received um, from individuals who have participated in these Q and A's and or focus groups? Everybody says this should be seen everywhere. Like every screening that I go to, and of course I'm not saying that as like a bias because I've seen this movie a million times. I really don't care to see it again because you know, I wrote, I was there, I wrote it, I shot it. I was there for editing. I've been at every screening. Like I could live another day without having to see this movie. See this film, right? Um, it's a fantastic <laughs> film, but um, you know, a lot of people say that this really should be seen everywhere and by everyone. Um, I will never forget that we had a, a screening in Portland, Oregon. And uh, it was a predominantly like 95% white audience. And, you know, this is a primarily black film, you know, black family, people of color all throughout the film. And so I thought that it wasn't going to be one that connected with that particular audience. But to my surprise, never assume when we held our Q&A session at the end, a lot of people were raising their hands and said, that's my dad. This is my mom. That's exactly how I felt when I was in this position and came out. And, you know, this is, you know, now I've created my own chosen family because my family was acting the same way that this family is acting in the movie. So to, to be able to see in real time how it's impacting people, um, that's a lot of the stuff that we hear is just that it should be seen everywhere by every person. Um, and people have just been working, you know, to, to get eyes on it, um, which I'm very grateful and so thankful for. Uh, did that answer your question? It did. It did. Okay. <laughs> it did. Uh, so 
there is a movement on the way, mm-hmm. right? I hear you guys are doing <laughs> big things. Y'all are, y'all making big moves. And so I hear that there is a thicker than blood movement. Can you I tell me a little that. bit about, huh? No, I'm fine. I said hey, you know, the streets <laughs> talk, the streets talk, the streets talk. So, so t- tell, me, tell me a little bit more about this, this movement. Like what's happening? Absolutely. This, oh, there's so much with it. And it's, uh, we've coined it hashtag TTB movement. And that stems from um, kind of, there, there is a scene in the film that, uh, and a line in the film that's spoken by a reverend character that we have. And he says, uh, do you know what the golden rule is? Treat everybody the way, you know, they should be treated. And so he shares what the platinum rule is. And the platinum rule is treat everybody what, the way that they need to be treated in order to become the whole person that they need to be. Um, and if you break that down, that really means treat people with love, operate in love, move throughout the world and throughout all spaces that you're in from a place of love. And so the times that we live in today, that's severely lacking. Um, empathy is severely lacking. Love is lacking. Unity is lacking. And so that is primarily the foundation of what the TTB movement is, is to be able to create avenues and spaces and move forward in those spaces and avenues in love towards all people, not just a particular class, group, sexual orientation, whatever, but we are all underneath this skin. We all have the same bones, the same blood, the same everything. We are human down to our core and nothing should come between us treating others with love and respect nothing as small as you know skin color or you know creeds ethnicity sexual orientation none of that should come between us walking in love towards each other so that's the bedrock and the foundation of the hashtag hashtag ttb movement and uh we're launching that in order to also create support and to garner attention around the second and the third installment of thicker than blood so this is the first of a three-part film series um there's so much more to dive into and uh we want to be able to engage uh community members and our audience members with this uh with this movement and that uh will include you know filling avenues of art Um, avenues of content creation and creativity, avenues of public health, um, LGBT sectors, faith sectors, everywhere that we can think of, and all the themes that we've included in the movie will kind of be all the themes that we, uh, all the themes and avenues that we branch this uh, movement out into. And it really is all about um, promoting love, empathy, and unity as we move forward in every space that we occupy in the world. Beautifully said, beautifully said. I do agree um, that society and the human race is lacking um, love, compassion, forgiveness. We can go on and on and on. Uh, And so I look forward to this movement. And I I hope that it kind of propels people to do acts of kindness. Um, One that's not videotaped, right, or, or recorded. You know, we're in yeah. this, this society where everyone wants to record what they're doing. Hopefully mm-hmm. it just it spawns things that come from the heart. I look forward right. to that and being a part of this movement. And that's what we hope I to would, do. I would, we know a lot of people... Are, oh, sorry, go ahead. No, go ahead. I'm sorry. I was, I was just going to say that's what we hope to do because there's a lot of performative... Um, yes. that people only do, you know, what's right if there's a camera on or if there's somebody watching... Or, and it, it, that shouldn't be the case. You know, it should just be a way that we live. Um, and we shouldn't be uh, placed in a position to where people sh- are doing the right thing to get notoriety, to get attention, to increase their followers or their following. Because then what good is it? It, 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 it isn't coming from the heart. It's not genuine. And I think that people automatically can pick up on that sense and recognize when it's not authentic and when it's not genuine. Um, and yeah, we're in this culture to where people truly believe if it's not on tape, it didn't happen to some extent. Yes. But if it comes, you know, if it's in this space, I think that people should operate with kindness and unity and love 
if there's nobody around, if there's yes. no camera around, if there are no eyes watching, because um, the uh, the truth is, this is what I firmly believe, is everything that we do in life impacts everybody that we come in contact with. There's a <laughs> ripple effect. We never know what that ripple effect is um, and the impact that we have on people. And so the when you're moving in spaces, and you're interacting with people, you're leaving an imprint on them. And that imprint is carried on to interactions with other people. So that's how you're impacting society. And so if you think that you can only do it when a camera is on you or when eyes are watching and not, you know, when it's when it's not on you, when you're, you know, moving about the world and people aren't watching, if cameras are on or if they're not on, you're still impacting people. Um, you're still changing people's lives and you're changing their reality um, in the instant of a second. Um, and I have always believed that it's important to really um, make sure that we take care of people in everything that we do. Uh, and you can only do that from a place of love. I would have to agree. I also agree, agree that acts, acts of kindness is contagious. Yes, it truly, truly is. So if you treat people with kindness, the hardest of persons, the, the person that we would deem to be emotionless, heartless, becomes softened by accident. Mm -hmm. So I totally mm -hmm. agree. And you can completely change somebody's hardened heart by your one act of kindness. And imagine yes. the ripple effect that has. You change that person, they take that kindness on to their other interactions with people that they're moving through the world with, and then it grows exponentially. Um, so yeah, we, we and that's why I tell a lot of people in the LGBT community, I, I, I was raised in a house of faith. You know, I'm a Christian. I truly believe in Jesus and, you know, walking in love and moving through the world and acting acts of kindness and if you know um I'm trying to figure out the best way to phrase this uh it i'm just gonna leave it at that i'm just gonna leave it at that yeah. all, right. all right i would be remiss if i did not ask you about characters okay and and so i know that when we because I'm, I'm an artsy person as well. And, and when we put out work, there are certain parts of our work that we resonate with the most. Mm -hmm. So what character in this movie do you, resonates with you the most? And even rather creating it, watching it from that lens, who, what, which character resonates with you the most? That's so hard to answer. Uh, <laughs> it's so hard. And I got to ask the hard stuff, right? I know it's so hard. Um, just because I, I see myself in all of them. Um, and I think that's how I was able to, to draw upon personal experience to be able to, to write them as honestly as I did. Um, you know, I feel like I connect with the main character, Jordan, just being, you know, uh, I mean, in the LGBT community and being raised in a house of faith. And um, I feel like I connect with, you know, the dad character who is, you know, very much a hard, a hard ass, a hard head, very stubborn. Um, and, you know, at one point in my life, I was very much that way as well. Um, and it, it took some people and their kindness to kind of soften my heart to be able to take those ripple effects on and you know have that impact on people that I've come in contact with in my life. Um, and then I, I really connect with the character Selena. You know, she's kind of like the uh, the voice of reason and the honesty voice and she can really deliver honesty in a way to where you can digest it. Um, and to be able to be to, to be able to take it in and to hear it and to process it and to make a change. Um, so I feel like, you know, I, I see myself in her as well. Um, I see myself in the main character, Richie. Um, I, yeah, I see myself in a lot of them. And even in the process of like writing the script, um, I drew on a lot of my own personal life and relationships that I have in my life and my relationship with my mom and all of it. So I really feel like there are bits and pieces of myself in the story as well as in each character. It's funny. Um, that you that you stated that you relate to every character, right? In some some sh way, shape, form, or fashion. 
And what sticks out to me is our intersectionality, mm -hmm. right? And how, regardless of which character you are, you have been or will be the other characters at some point at some or point around some life. other issue, right? Yeah. And at so I think that when people pass judgment, when people stand on one side of the fence, they have to realize that you are going to be, you have been, you will be on the other side of that fence mm -hmm. for another subject matter, another day, another event. Mm -hmm. And so I think in challenging people's intersectionalities around even their existence is mm -hmm. important. It's very important. And I think that's one reason I connected with this story so much is because being a black man from the South, being a part of the LGBT community, and then also being a man of faith, like those are three major intersections. Yes. And not a lot of people talk about, you know, a lot of the stuff that's happened in the film because of those three intersections. Usually yes. you don't you don't find many of that, like, you know, crossing paths, especially, you know, faith and LGBT community. And that's why I'm so... Um, adamant about the work that I put out and making sure that, you know, the work that I put out does include hope because I do want the LGBT community to know that we are loved because um, all throughout our lives and our history, we've always been told that God hates us. Um, and I just want people to know that that's not true. And hopefully they can know that by watching this movie because that's my life. I've lived that life. And from my experience and my journey, I can say that that's absolutely not true because I've lived it and I've been through it. So yeah, when you say that at one point or another, you might be on this side of the fence, but something's gonna put you on the other side of the fence. You're not gonna stay here your life because we as humans, we're constantly evolving. There's no way that you can stay the same from the day that you're born to the day that you die and not change at all. So there's gonna be something that happens in your life or in someone's life that's gonna put you on the other side of the fence. So don't be so quick to judge and to cast judgment on other people because you'll find yourself in the same position one day wishing that you, you know, people would not cast the same judgment on you. So don't be so quick to judge and to come to a conclusion about a person. That's the other uh, theme and the other message about this film is don't jump to conclusions about anybody. You don't know anything about anybody. Even the closest person to you, you don't know the inner workings of their mind. You don't know the inner workings of their heart. And so to be able to cast judgment on somebody based on what you think you know about them, you shouldn't, you really shouldn't. That would be correct. Mm -hmm. So lastly, before I let you go and kind of lead into the trailer, cause we have to allow people to see this great thing that we're talking about, right? Tell us how can uh, individuals become engaged how can they reach you? How can they get access to the film? Like, how do we become a part of this movement that's happening? Like, hey. You gotta, you gotta jump get... on the train. <laughs> yeah, how do I get on the train? Where's the train going? Give us some information. Absolutely, so we are working on launching the TTV movement this year. And uh, if people are on social, you can go, you know, on Instagram, you can follow me. It's at Antony underscore Williams, A-N-T-N-Y underscore Williams, or uh, at Second Glance Pro, which is Second Glance Productions, uh, my production company that produced Thicker Than Blood. Um, and if you'd like to view the film, go to secondglanceproductions.com. We've made it available for renting. I think you can rent it for a period of 48 hours. Uh, and you should be able to, to check it out there. So that's where you can find it all. But yeah, follow us on social media. We're on Instagram and we are on Facebook. Well, Anthony, I want to thank you for taking this time with me. It's been a pleasure to hear even more because I've seen the film a million times as well. Uh, <laughs> but it's good to get a, a different perspective on the who, what, when, where, why of this brilliant piece of work. So I'm going to end this with allowing individuals to see the trailer. And I look forward to seeing you soon. Yes, absolutely. It's been too long since we've seen each other. Let's get together. <laughs> yes, indeed. <laughs> All right. So let's give people what they are, what they have been waiting for.
Look at me, Egghead. But you're going to have to learn to fight someday. If not by punching some punk in his mouth, then at least by fighting for what you want. This is the first time in I don't know how long we've been in the same room. Oh my god, I can't believe you're here! Seems like I haven't seen you in forever. Three years almost. Oh my god! <laughs> 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 How you doing? Hey man, good to see you. We have got a lot of firsts to celebrate today. My firstborn becoming a partner in his law firm. He's the first to break through that glass ceiling, and he's the first to make this family proud. Don't give this boy more than he can handle. Uh, don't want to see him break a nail. Why you got to ride him so hard all the time, Pops? You two still aren't talking. If you count the silent treatment and looks of disdain, He's making presidential speeches. If he didn't want you here, he would have never invited you. Jordy, I just want us to have a good day for our picture book album without any fighting, strife, or division. Where does the church stand on accepting those who knowingly and willingly live a life that's unorthodox? Everything happens for a reason. When it's supposed to happen and how it's supposed to happen. Look, the longer you wait, the harder it is. And the harder it is, the more it hurts. Still gets me every time. <laughs> me too. I'm like, wow. So just tell them one more one more time where they can get access to this body of work. Absolutely. So secondglanceproductions.com, uh, if you're interested in renting the film, we do have it available there on the website. Uh, and then if you'd like to get plugged into future stuff that we're doing, stay up to date on the future, uh, Thicker Than Blood 2, as well as Thicker Than Blood 3, or even any festivals and screenings uh, that we do across the country, then you can follow us on Instagram at Second Glance Pro. Or if you want to follow me, I am at Antney underscore Williams on Instagram. That's A-N-T-N-Y underscore Williams. I want to thank you again, Mr. Williams. It's been a pleasure. And we're about to blow up. Oh, let's do it. Let's we're about do to it. blow up, man. <laughs> this has been wonderful. Thank, thank you. So you. Much. It's been such a pleasure talking to you. Thank you. <laughs>